Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be here with you. I appreciate very much the, the privilege of being here at Christian Family Worship Center. Uh, two services. That's different. We had to get up early and leave early to get here. But I was here before anybody else was. I was here before they opened the door. <laughs> Getting up at 5 o'clock is nothing new. <laughs> I want to uh, pick up on what he read to you, what Pastor Mark read to you this morning. I want to use that to step into what I, I want to share with you about what he read to you has to do with those of us who are, you know, if, if you, he, Paul said, I was crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And you didn't get that way by keeping the law. You got that way by faith in Christ Jesus. Now go to John chapter 3, and I want to read to you what Jesus said to one of the uh, chief rulers of the Jews in that day when he was walking here in this earth. Uh, John chapter 3 that says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And then Jesus uh, didn't respond to his statement, but he went his way. The Lord will always do that. He, he goes his way. He's not going to let what you have to say affect what he's doing, or me either. He's not going to let what I have to say affect what he's doing. Jesus answered and said to him, Most surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And he wasn't talking about heaven. He didn't say heaven. He said the kingdom of God. Amen. Jesus in another place said the kingdom of God is among you. He said the kingdom of God is at hand. He said the kingdom of God is within you. And so he wasn't talking about heaven. He's telling this man. And Paul was talking about the same thing. He was talking about he was in Christ, but he was still, Paul preached the kingdom. Now, let's read a little further. I say to you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most surely I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He didn't say he couldn't go to heaven. He said you can't enter the kingdom of God. I know that's messing with some of your minds because we were all taught that he was talking about going to heaven here, but he's not. And in fact, as he even says, most surely I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. When you were born into this world, born of flesh, you were born of water. You ladies that have given birth, know your water broke before that baby came, right? Born of water. Well, I was told that meant being baptized in water, but that's not what Jesus was talking about because he says that which is born of flesh. He's talking about natural birth. Did you know you have to be in this world before you can get in the kingdom? You have to be alive in this world before you can be born again into the kingdom. All right, now go with uh, Matthew chapter uh, 6. <clears throat> How many of you know the Our Father? I know that's the, our, our Catholic brothers and sisters call it the Our Father. I was taught that it was the Lord's Prayer. Both of them are right and both of them are wrong. It's the disciples' prayer. <laughs> that's what we should be praying as, as, as disciples of the Lord. And he said, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom. What? That doesn't mean get to go to heaven. 
Your kingdom come. Your will be done where? Not in heaven. He's not just talking about heaven. He's talking about your will be done here in earth just like it's already being done in heaven. How many of you know God's will is done in heaven? Amen. Every day, all the time. Not so much here. <laughs> but our job as those who are born again, those who are in Christ, those who, like Paul in Galatians chapter 2, was talking about, it's our job to see to it that the kingdom is made manifest in the earth. And the reason why we don't is because we've misunderstood or, or were taught some things that Jesus said. We were taught, the, and I, listen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm 73, going to be 74 in, in May, and I've been in church all my life. I have. I, my earliest memories, I remember being three years old, being in a Sunday school, a nursery Sunday school class. Don't make me any better than anybody else, just means I have a lot of experience in the church. Some of it good, some of it not so good. Some of it right and some of it way wrong. Not evil, just ignorant. <laughs> Ignorance is one of the devil's favorite tools. If he can keep you ignorant of the purpose and plan of God, he can keep you from fulfilling the destiny that God has for you here in this earth. Amen. Matthew 13. <clears throat> Y'all are doing a good job back there on that, that uh, TV, the video. I want to go to Matthew chapter 13 and I want to go to verse 34. Excuse me. Let, me, let me adjust that. Go to 633. I, I missed something. You guys are doing all right. I'm, I, it's my fault. They, if I give them the numbers, they'll do it. Now, y'all are, you're blessed, Mark, to have all that working for you here. Jesus said in uh, Matthew 633, he said, seek first the kingdom of God. He didn't say seek first to go to heaven. Right? Let me say it to you this way. Maybe it'll help you understand. The word kingdom is where a, a, a king rules, a king's domain. Kingdom is actually a, 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 a contraction of two words, kingdom and domain, king and domain. A king's domain is his kingdom. Amen. And where a king has a domain, that's where he rules. Right. And when it says, seek first the kingdom of God, it says, in effect, seek to be under the rule of God in your life. It didn't say seek to go to heaven. Most folks that are seeking to go to heaven, and, and the church has taught us real well how to go to heaven. <laughs> but they didn't teach us how to seek the kingdom. They didn't teach us how to come under the rule of God first in every area of our lives. And I'm not fussing at anybody, I'm just telling you the truth. So he said in Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. We're going to talk about some of those things in a moment. Now we can go to 13.44. You see, brothers and sisters, everything, everything Jesus did had to do with the kingdom. If you, if you, I'll tell you what you do, just for the sake of knowing if you will read just the Gospel of Matthew. Now here's what you're going to run up on. In Matthew, the phrase kingdom of heaven is used most of the time. That's where the problem comes. A couple of times in the King James, it's kingdom of God. He says kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is the same thing. Same thing. The kingdom does come from heaven, but the kingdom of God is the rule of God in a man's life here in the earth today. And so he said, seek first that. And then he, gives, he, he talks in parables all the time. Jesus talks in parables all the time. In fact, it is in Matthew 13, 34, it says, without a parable, he did not speak to them. He only talked in parables. So that means you're probably not going to understand what he's saying. You say, well, I understand those parables. Yeah, I know you do. 
I know you do. <laughs> we think we do, but there's some, there's some hidden meaning there. And the only way you're really going to know is to ask questions. And that's another whole message, but asking questions. And so he spoke in parables, and here in Matthew 6, uh, 13, Matthew 13, 44, he says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like. Anytime he says something, Matthew and Mark and Luke say that a lot, and, uh, and John says it a whole lot in the book of Revelation. It's like this. He didn't say it is that. He says it's like that. And so he says the, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Now, think about it. You out walking around in somebody's corn patch, they've harvested the corn, they've cut down the corn stalks, and you out there walking around, just juking around, and you run up on something, and there, here's this treasure box in that field. And you look around. Any of y'all ever saw that movie, The Shawshank Redemption? You remember when old Morgan Freeman was walking along that fence and he got to that tree stump and he pulled that box out? And he's been in prison all his life and he thinks somebody's watching him. <laughs> I bet that old boy in this parable, when he found that treasure, he's looking around. Nobody watching, so he hides it again and he goes and finds who owns that field and how much you want for that thing? What does it say? It says, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. He invests, puts everything else aside in order to have this over here. Right? Is that what your Bible says? That's what it says the kingdom is like. Ain't many of us done that. We just wanted to go to heaven. Amen. Big difference between selling out and going on. <laughs> we just want to go on and go to heaven because that's what they taught us. Church taught us how to get saved and how to go to heaven, but they didn't teach us how to live under the rule of God. Y'all looking at me funny, but that's a good place to say amen. amen. It's really the truth. I know, because I've been there and done that. So, verse 45. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all the other pearls that he had, so he could buy that one. Now, I have a friend that come with a great revelation one day, and he preached, oh, he was excited in preaching this message about the pearl of great price was me, you, that God saw a treasure in you and he sold everything that he had so he could get you. Well, that's nice, but you're not the kingdom of heaven. He said the kingdom of heaven is like. He didn't say you being saved and you being in God's family is like. So I didn't say nothing to him, but I didn't like what he had to say because it didn't fit. <laughs> you know, when a guy's got a revelation, you can't change his mind. I know because I got one and you can't change my mind. <laughs> but I've been working on this one for a while. I've been watching it happen. Watching it happen. So here's the deal. The kingdom of God is of greater value and actually is of greater importance than anything else in your life. Anything. If you guys would put me that uh, uh, PowerPoint up with the circle. You see that middle circle? K-O-G, kingdom of God. I, the Lord showed me this. I was preaching at a prison. <laughs> kind of the same thing. <laughs> I don't treat them people in the prison any different than I treat you. 
Some of you guys aren't as free as some of those guys in the prison. I love you, but that's true. They locked up, they locked up behind bars, but they're free in here. All right, that middle circle, K-O-G, means the kingdom of God. He says, you seek first the middle circle. And he said, I'll add all those other things to you. And you say, well, you got family up at the top. That's the most important. No, I, don't re- it, it, I didn't put it there as a matter of importance. I, put it, I just put them as they came, as they, I saw, saw them. <clears throat> you know which is the most important? Whichever one's God dealing with at the moment. That's why it's in a circle. If you, if you can look at that circle and think about a wagon wheel, old wagon wheel on an old Conestoga wagon, which one of the spokes is the most important? They're all important, but the one that's the most important at the moment is the one that's on the bottom that's bearing the load. It's the one that God's focused on at the moment, but it's always turning. And so if you seek first the kingdom of God, then he will add those other things to you the way he wants them added. What we do, we decide what we want. We decide what's order of importance to us. And that's wrong. What's important is the kingdom of God. It's of more value than any of those things. That old boy soul turned loose of everything else he had in order to get what was in the center. Are you hearing me? I'm not talking about going to heaven. If you're born again, that's where you're going. Amen. That's not an issue. Jesus took care of that. Quit worrying about going to heaven. If you're going to labor over something, labor over fulfilling and obtaining the destiny, the purpose, the plan that God has for you in this life, in, in this earth, in this life. What's going to come after ain't nobody really knows. I know I've read some of the books. Some of them saw the great light and they went and they saw all this stuff. And that's wonderful. But I think what they saw is like something. I don't think they really understood what they saw any more than John on Mount, on the Isle of Patmos fully understood everything he saw. It was all a parable. God still talks in parables, people. And so if you seek first the kingdom of God, then God will add that to you in a way that it can't be taken from you. If you, listen to me, if you add those things to your life, you're going to lose it. Jesus said, if you lose your life for my sake, you'll get it, you'll keep it. But if you try to keep it, you're going to lose it. Most folks, those things on the outer periphery is their life. Keep your life, you're going to lose it. Focus and seek the kingdom first. All that other is going to be added to you. And that's what it's about. Now, let's look at a man that Jesus uh, had this conversation with uh, in uh, Matthew 19. He had a conversation about this kingdom, this rich young ruler. <clears throat> Matthew, uh, you probably, I don't, you guys don't have that verse on my PowerPoint, but you've got it, I guess. Matthew 19, 16. It says, Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now I'm just going to say it to you right here, uh, uh, because, oh, uh, well, let me just see. Uh, it's, it's in this sequence of verses. When this, young, when this man came and asked, what shall I do that I may have eternal life, he was not, again, talking about going to heaven. Now, everybody thinks that. How many of you know everybody's going to live forever somewhere? It just depends on who your God is, where you're going to live forever. Right? So everybody's going to live forever, and when he said eternal life, he was not talking about going to heaven. In fact, is if you, if you look at Matthew uh, 19 and verse uh, 24, uh, no, that's not the one I want. <sighs> 23. He 
He says, uh, Assuredly I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter a kingdom of heaven. Again, I say it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle uh, than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. There's the phrase kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven together. The rich young ruler was talking about the kingdom of God. He just called it eternal life. And that's exactly right. Jesus didn't forget that the man asked him. Listen, Jesus said, what do I have to do to have, or Mark says, inherit eternal life? I could have gone to Mark and preached the same message to you and talked to you about it being an inheritance as a son. The kingdom of God is your inheritance. But you have to seek that. You have to do what it takes to have that made manifest in your life. So he said, what do I have to do to obtain eternal life? And Jesus said, Jesus talked about the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't forget what the man said. Kingdom of God and eternal life are the same thing. You being in the kingdom of God now, you have eternal life in you today. You're not, if, you, if you don't have it now, you ain't going to get it till you are born again. Yeah, don't be caught dead without eternal life. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's exactly right. And so here Jesus is talking. Let's go back up to where Jesus begins his conversation with the man. Verse 16, the guy said, What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Verse 17, Jesus said, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Now think, turn your thinkers on. If Jesus was talking about being saved, why would he tell him to keep the commandments? Mark just read to you, you don't get saved by keeping the law. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That's the first thing he opened up with, Amen. right? So why would Jesus talk to him about the commandments? Because keeping the commandments has to do with living in the kingdom. It ha Listen, there are ten, right? Ten commandments. Four of them have to do with how you treat God. The first four have to do with your relationship with God. The last six have to do with your relationship with people. And here in the, as you read this, Jesus said, uh, he said to him, uh, the rich young ruler said, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. All those have to do with how you treat people, right? So, and the guy says, well, I've done that all from my youth. Is that what your Bible says? Look at it. How many of y'all got your Bibles with you? You got them open. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I got my Bible. It ain't open, but I got it. <laughs> I know you got it up there. And that's good. That's good. I don't care when they got it shining up there. I'm looking at it in my book. <laughs> not, you say you don't trust anybody? No, I just like to look at it in my own book. I like to go to it and see it for myself. That way I stay in practice finding that stuff. All right. He said, I kept all these from my youth. And Jesus didn't argue with him. He didn't say he didn't. He just said uh, in verse 21, if you want to be perfect, if you want to be complete, that word perfect there is teleos. It means mature, complete. Go sell what you have and give to the poor. Now, any of y'all ever hear a preacher say you have to give it all away? That's what they told me. Go sell everything you have and give it all to the poor. That, that's, and ain't none of them done that. <laughs> but that's what they tell you. But that is not what Jesus said. He, listen to what he said. He said, sell what you, your possessions. Turn your possessions into currency. Give some of that money to the poor. Come follow me and support the ministry and I'll teach you how to do what I do. Because you don't learn how to walk in eternal life in a moment. I can't lay hands on you and fix you. Jesus couldn't either. It's a process. 
of renewing the mind, learning to think like God thinks, so you can talk like God talks, so you can act like God acts in the earth, like Jesus acted in the earth, like He spoke. So he said, if you want to be perfect, go sell whatever you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And when the young man heard that, he went away sorrowful, for he's had great possessions. He he didn't understand what Pastor Mark said. He said, when it leaves your hand, it doesn't leave your life. It goes into your future. All he saw, this rich young ruler, when he gave it away, he saw it as losing. Are you hearing me? And he couldn't afford to lose anything. Very wealthy, but he couldn't afford to lose anything. He couldn't turn loose everything he had. Put that circle back up there again. You see all those things? He couldn't turn loose of that in order to seek the kingdom of God. Couldn't turn loose of it. He wanted the kingdom, but he couldn't turn loose of what he had in order to get what he wanted. Now, um, I want to tell you a little story uh, this morning about a monkey. There's there's places in this world where they they capture monkeys, uh, and this is... I'm not telling you a tale, this is how it really works. They, they capture monkeys for either one of two purposes. Either they capture them to sell them to people that have put them in the zoos or they're going to train them, or some of them capture them to eat them. And the way you catch a monkey, or the way these people catch a monkey, very simple. They take a, uh, a clay jar that's about that big around at the bottom, and it narrows down and comes up to, has a, a, a spout that comes up so high that's about that big around. And they put nuts and candy down in there and they tie that jug to a tree and the monkey goes in there and he sticks his hand down in there to get the nut or candy. But when he grabs the candy, his hand won't come out now. And you walk right up on him and knock him in the head. He ain't turning loose of that candy because he's got it in his hand. You got to be smarter than a monkey. You got to turn loose of what you got to get what you want, boys and girls. You want all that stuff on the outside? You got to turn loose of it and seek first the kingdom. If you don't seek first the kingdom, you can hold on to all that other stuff, but you ain't going to get what you want. Everybody's looking, wants the purposes of God in their life. If I ask you about that, you're going to say you do. And I know you really do. But you don't, you, don't, you, don't know how, you don't understand what you got to do. There's a price to pay. Salvation's free, but kingdom's not. You got to turn loose of what you got to get what you want. But he'll add it back to you in a way that you never had it before. So, how many of y'all are smarter than monkeys? <laughs> yeah. You're smarter than monkeys, but you've got to be willing to turn loose, too. If you don't turn loose, you're not smarter than a monkey. See, because the, the, we've been trained. We've been trained to believe you've got to hold on to this stuff. God wants to add it to you in a way that you can't lose it. But you got to do it his way. You got to turn loose of what you got to get what you want. Now, go to Mark chapter 4. <clears throat> Mark chapter 4, verse 19. Let's read 18. 4 18. Now, Jesus is telling the parable. Here's another one of those parables that he tells. All these parables. In fact, there's one place Jesus kind of chastened the the disciples. He said, if you don't understand this parable, you can't understand any of them. If you don't understand this parable of the seed, you're going to miss all the rest of them. 
And so in verse 18 he said, Now these are the ones sown among the thorns, and they are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Okay. In order to be able to seek first the kingdom of God, you've got to overcome some stuff. You really do. The things you have to overcome, according to Mark 4.19, is the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the, desires for other th the desire for other things, it says, enters in and chokes the word. All of those things will choke out the word. You see, if, if I don't set my focus on that center circle that they had up there, you don't have to put it back. You, they got the picture in their head. If you don't seek first that center circle, seek first the kingdom of God, those other things fit in the category here of the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things. And you're going to miss it. Not heaven. I ain't telling you you can't go to heaven. I'm telling you you're going to miss out on the destiny that God has for you here in this earth. And that's the case with most people in most churches because they don't hear the kingdom message. You know what's, pre I can tell you, I can go to any church here in this area and what they're preaching this morning is a salvation message to a house full of saved people. Telling them how to get saved so they can go to heaven. 98% of the time that's the case. I'm not being critical. I'm not trying to be unkind. I don't hate those people. I, I, I have great compassion for them because I know uh, what's missing. Look at Matthew chapter 10. The instructions that Jesus gave to his apostles is the same instructions that need to be followed today. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5. Matthew 10, 5 says this, These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Listen to what he said. Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Now look at me. Let me have your eyes. He, in effect, said, don't go to the sinner man. Don't go to the man that doesn't know God. Go to the people that are the covenant people of God and tell them that the kingdom of God is available right now, today. You see, the church is focused on going out and telling all the sinner folks how to get saved, but ain't nobody in the church taught them how to live in the kingdom yet. The message of the kingdom has to be preached to the church. That's why I'm here doing that. I'm not out on the TV necessarily looking to get everybody out there in the world in the kingdom. The, the messengers of the kingdom are the people that already have relationship with God, but they have to get the message. You, 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 you have the message of salvation and that's wonderful that you do. But the fact that you don't know how to lead somebody into the kingdom is a shame. And I'm not being critical again of anybody. I'm telling you, that's where we all come from. And the way we get the message of the kingdom in us is through a thing called discipleship, which is kind of long-term hard thing. You got to deal with people's thinking. The gospel of the kingdom is the message that should be coming out of the church. But the church has to get a hold of it first. Let me tell you what Paul did. 
Jesus said, don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to the Samaritans. These are people that were not covenant people of God. Today, the church is the covenant, keeping, the covenant people of God. But they have to have the message of the kingdom before you try to go out. And then what we try, when we go out, what we've been taught is that we got to go find somebody and tell him he needs to be saved because if he don't get saved, he's going to bust hell wide open. Well, first of all, that's not good news. It's the same thing as telling a guy on the side of the road, he's got a, a flat tire on his car, and you pull up, roll the window down, and say, hey, man, you got a flat. You didn't help him a bit. Stop the car, get your jack out, and help him. Make a friend. And then when you make a friend, then he can see the life of God in you, and then he'll want to know how you do that. How does that work in you? Where'd that, ki that God kind of love, how do you get that? How do you love people whenever they're not, when they're not nice, when they don't do right? Amen. Jesus said that the church, he was talking to the apostles, but the church is the salt of the earth, the earth and the light of the world. You all ever hear your salt shaker saying anything? Salt don't talk. Salt just does. These lights don't say nothing. They just shine. And so as the salt of the earth and the light of the world with the kingdom message, you just go out there and you live it. Amen. But you have to know it first. You have to understand it. See, we, we more interested, the church has been more interested in getting out of here. Right? Everybody's concentrating on when Jesus is coming. We're getting out of here. I had them tell me, don't worry about anything. Jesus is coming. We'll let the Antichrist have the world. Well, that's a lie. He don't, he, it's not his. The Bible says the heaven of the heavens belong to the Lord and the earth he's given to the sons of men. Yeah, this earth belongs to you and me. But we have to, like Adam didn't do, we have to exercise the authority and the dominion that God has given us. But until you learn the message of the kingdom, that's not going to happen. You can go to heaven and miss everything God has for you in the kingdom. God's going to love you, but you're going to have stood there and don't have nothing. Well, I prayed for a whole bunch of people. Well, yeah, but did you live it in front of them in a way they could see God? You see, the natural man cannot see God but he can see what God does in your life. Amen. And unless you're sold out and having given it all to him in order to seek the kingdom, they can't see because your light's not shining. You may be quoting Bible verses and carrying a Bible around and going to church every Sunday, but they say a lot of people do that. There's a lot of people in church this morning but there's not a whole bunch of people hearing the message of the kingdom. Are you hearing me? Because the church don't teach it. Mostly. Some few places, like here, does. But I guarantee you, some of you guys, it hadn't got through yet. I see them looks. <laughs> you looking at me funny. It's really the gospel, the good news of the kingdom. How that we can live under the rule of God in the earth today in a way that will positively affect the lives of the people that God sends across my path. I don't have to corner them. Jesus with the woman at the well, John chapter 4. Amen. He just asked her for a drink of water. That was so uncommon. She said, why would you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink of water? You see, the Jews and Samaritans didn't have nothing to do with each other. Jews called Samaritans dogs. They were half-breeds, spiritually and otherwise, as far as the Jews were concerned. And uh, she said, why would you do that? Why would you ask me for a drink of water? And he just said, well, if you knew who it was that was asking you for water, you'd be asking him for some. She said, well, you don't even have a bucket. <laughs> she was still thinking naturally. He said, 
what, she said, what kind of water is that? And he said, oh, the water I'll give you is the water that causes eternal life to spring up. All he did was, listen what he did. He submitted to her by asking her for help. A rank heathen, a woman who'd had five husbands and was living with another man that wasn't her husband. Is that what the Bible said? He didn't avoid her. He went after her because God was going after her. We have to be willing to go after those that look to be so, so ungodly. But we have to be able to go after them with an understanding of how the kingdom of God is working in us because we have come under God's rule. That's a problem for most of us. We don't like to be under anybody's authority. If you don't learn how to come under authority in a church, you're sure not going to come under authority in the kingdom. Some folks, if Pastor Mark says something about authority, they leave. Probably some of you all know some. Because <laughs> they, they're rebels. They can, how many of you know God's kids, many of them are rebels? They're God's kids, but they're rebels. God loves them, but they're rebels. Did you get that monkey story? <laughs> so here's the deal. Let me go at it one more time and I'm going to quit. To truly obtain the kingdom, there is a battle to be won over this following things. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things that enter in and choke the word and make us unfruitful. If I get focused on the outer circle, I miss the center circle. And I miss the purpose and the plan of God in my life. Stand up with me and let's pray. <clears throat> Father, I thank you this morning for your goodness and kindness. And Father, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus that you illuminate the eyes of our understanding. Father, I, I, I pray that uh, the veil comes off the eyes of each one here in order to see. And then after the veil is off, that we would on purpose open our eyes. We don't want to be like little puppies that are born blind. We want to open our eyes and we want to look into the riches of your kingdom. Lord, help us to recognize that the kingdom is the treasure. This man that hid that box of treasure, uh, he went back after it, willing to sell all that he had. Help us, Lord, to realize the reality of that, to lay it all at your feet, to take up the purpose and plan of the kingdom in our lives. I thank you that you hear our prayer, and I thank you that you will meet each need in each life. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen.